Well, I do have, I have memories of, of Reagan being president and I remember all that. And uh, I remember the, (laughs) I remember the California earthquake. Yes. I've been listening. Oh yeah. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. You prove me wrong. No one has to know that. (laughs) But here's why. Here's why. This is the History Buzz. Welcome to the History Buzz, where we talk about history over a couple of drinks and let the conversation wander where it may. I am your host, Scott, here with my wife and historian, Jen. Hello. And today, we are chatting with someone we actually met on YouTube. This is Chris from the Whitdock Cemetery Tours YouTube channel. Welcome to the History Buzz, Chris. Thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's really great to, to meet you. And um, like we said, I'm going to introduce, let uh, Chris introduce himself here real quick before we do. If you guys are listening to this podcast, uh, we encourage you uh, before you empty your glasses while you're listening to this podcast with us, ideally not driving. Um, I want to ask the listeners to, to help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or sharing this with as many people as possible. Now, Chris, you are a, a fellow history fan, and I'll, I'll just say YouTuber, even though that that sounds weird for <laughs> I'll just say someone of my age. I'll just, I'll just, put, I'll just put myself out there. So, Chris, wh- tell us about yourself. Where, where are you from? How did the YouTube channel start? And then I'll let Jen kind of talk about how you guys initially kind of connected via some videos and how this kind of came about. Well, yeah, I'll go ahead and piggyback off what you said. It's I, I feel like I'm way too old to be called a YouTuber. Also, <laughs> I, the the way all this started. Truthfully, I had connected with some, I guess you would say some long lost family through ancestry and we became really became friends and we got to talking back and forth and they decided they were coming to Kentucky where I'm from, from Northeast Kentucky uh, to visit. So when they came, we have a shared great grandmother. So I thought, how in the world am I going to, because she had been dead a long time and I was just a little kid when she passed. So I'm, I'm thinking, how in the world? Am I going to show them who this lady was? So I got the idea. I'm just going to do a little short documentary video. The first scene of that video was me going to the cemetery. And, you know, and you know how it is. And I'm there and I'm like, how am I going to do this? And I try to convey that on the video. So I go to the cemetery. And then I'm thinking, you know, I like doing that. I've always loved documentaries. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to start making some short films. So that was my original idea. But I've always loved visiting cemeteries. So I thought, I'd, if I'm branding myself as a history channel, I mean, where can you get history like you can a cemetery? So I went Absolutely. to visit some graves. And one of the first graves I visited was in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, Jim Barney, which is the guy who played yes. Ernest in all the Ernest movies. Oh, that yeah, man. I actually, know I know yeah. Ernest. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. He movies. was from Kentucky, oh, just right down the road. I didn't realize that growing up, or I would have been telling everybody, you know. <laughs> but... So that was one of my first cemetery visits, and really, I just never stopped. Yeah. And I, I love doing it, and that's really how Whit Docs got started. My name is Chris Whit. Uh, so Whit Docs, the Docs part was really supposed to be for documentary. So I've kind of put <laughs> that a little bit uh, Whit Docs on the people that I go visit. So yeah. I do little documentaries about them and tell a little bit about their life. Um, so that's kind of how my channel came to be. And how long have you been doing it for now? For how long now? Um, Jeez. I started, how drink, Jen? <laughs> it's not all that long. I started back in, I believe, 2019 is when they came to visit. Oh, I okay. think I'd done my first cemetery tour probably summer, somewhere around June 2019. So yeah. I'm just really a little over two years into this. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're doing really well. I think you're right around as of recording. I'll just put that out there because maybe in two years we'll listen back, yeah. listen back to this podcast. But right now you're right around 20,000 subscribers or something like that. Yeah, we just passed 21,000 this okay. past week, and, and I can't believe it. I mean, really, when I first started doing this, I didn't really realize, and this is truthful, I didn't realize there was such a community out there yeah. of people who visited cemeteries. So I started, really, I didn't really watch any YouTube cemetery channels before I started mine. It was really only after I started that I realized, hey, this is a thing here. Oh, my gosh. So I've met some great people, and I will add you all to the list. Oh, Just some great you. people through my journey. Now, isn't there a name for cemetery visitors? Is like a centophile or something like that? Like people who like cemeteries? It, yeah. 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 It's, I think it's, I think it's path, 
Papaphile. Yeah. Papaphile, papaphile, like papaphile, papaphile yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting name. That doesn't make any sense. But but Not we met... and I, I didn't know that before I started this channel either. That's something somebody told me. Yeah, I know. I'm like, <laughs> What'd oh, you say? That's a weird name. Um I ha we had done a video on Arlington. That's right. And that's and that, that's, that's kind of how you our, guys Yes, that's one of my one of our first videos and I was really adamant about doing Arlington because I had known no one had done Maureen O'Hara's grave. Yeah. And I had searched YouTube for Maureen O'Hara's grave and no one had done it. So I'm like, Scott, we need to do Arlington. And Arlington's a hard cemetery, as you probably know, Chris, because you can't drive. You have to right. It really, it really is. Night. And I'll tell you what happened. Funny story. Me and my wife went on a trip and we were actually going to... We started out there. We were on our way to Virginia Beach, which you saw those Norfolk videos, yes. and that, that's where that came from. It's all on the same trip. So I, you know, I love DC. So I'm like, let's let's go out and let's sightsee a little bit the day before we went to Arlington. And she had got these new shoes, and I mean, they just absolutely destroyed the bottom of her feet. Yeah. So I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, we're going to Arlington tomorrow where there's no driving. Yeah. So, so she was a trooper, and she's been a, I mean, just a magnificent help through my channel. She. Her name's Angel, and she finds she really is my angel. She finds all these places. It's just a great support system. But anyway, uh, I said all that to say this: I would love to make a return visit to Arlington because our trip was just was just. You, there's no way you can get there's, it. In, there's in so one much. There. No one realizes how big that cemetery is, and that you can't drive it. So you yep. have to walk it. Yeah, the the second time we went back, we, we were looking. We were seven miles. We walked seven miles in a day with our kids, which with our kids, yeah, props yeah. to our kids for actually hanging in there. That's impressive. Yeah, That's yeah. Impressive. and it was like yeah. it was hot and humid. Yeah. And we were we went. The last one we found was the gunnery sergeant from uh, Full, Metal Full Metal Jacket, uh, Ermi. Ermi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Gunny Ermi. And he was like all the way he's off like around, in the like, he's like way in the back <laughs> section. And he's not. Yeah. And it's not easy to get to. And uh, yeah. that, that's a whole lot of walking. So, so shout out to your wife for, yeah. for hanging and in there. We understand after her the feet. commitment it takes too from a from a, the support system that's yeah. needed to make these videos. So it really is absolutely yeah. shout out to her. Well, actually, let's drink to her. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you but go. yeah, that video, and I remember I was on a uh, another um, little YouTube show before, and they asked me, "Where do you want to go? Like, what's your dream?" And I said, "I've, I've got to get to Arlington." Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's going to end up being my most popular video. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's what happened. So what happened was I had done Arlington. Yeah. I think I'd already done it. And I was like, what else is out there? What else has somebody done of Arlington? Like, what am I not competing with? But what else are people looking at when they look up YouTube or Arlington? And your video came up. And that's the first time I saw your video. And I think I had mentioned, hey, we were just there. Because I think your video came up a week after. Yeah, Arlington. it must have been a couple of weeks passing. And so I was like, were you there when we were there? And I think I had messaged you. And then I think I even linked our video into your comments. I think yeah, it was something like that. Yes. I believe, yeah, it came from a comment that yeah. I checked your all's channel out. And I yeah. thought, my goodness. Yes. And then I truly believe this YouTube. I mean, it's just, you just got to stay consistent. There's ups and downs, ups and downs. Yeah. And really what you're waiting on is for something about that video for you two to grab it and push it. Yes. And as soon as that, I mean, that that's going to happen to you all when it does, your channel's going to take off. Yeah, I, I appreciate, appreciate it. Chris, you were just... I just remember you were just so genuine. You responded back and you're like, I watched your video. It was great. I love you guys. I'm going to subscribe right now. And since then, you've commented on a lot of our videos and just given us so much positive feedback and motivation. I really, I really appreciate it. Yeah. And, and oh, you're very welcome. And, and Chris, you know, I, I, I joke about this. Obviously, I'm not on many of the, the Walker <laughs> History videos, but I, I joke about this on the podcast a fair amount. I, I I'm not a huge history buff, right? <laughs> Here I am, like producing like a full blown history YouTube channel, two podcasts now, yes. married to a historian, and, and like history was never my cup of tea growing up. So w one of the bars for me for making videos that that I always joke about is that if I can get through a video after I make it and I'm I haven't lost interest, then that's a good video, yeah. right? And that's coming from like a a, a non a non history buff buff kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Um, but the one thing that, like you said, Chris, was just the community mm -hmm. within just this niche of of YouTube, of, of history and visiting cemeteries. When I started seeing cemeteries, yeah, I mean, your channel, there's a couple other channels out there. I mean, I was just flabbergasted. At, I mean, the c cemetery visiting is just kind of a niche in and of itself. Yeah. 
It really is. And one thing that really, really struck me about this community is when I, I thought, you know, here I am, I'm, I'm the new guy here. And I did not want these guys. I didn't want to come across as me trying to be competitive. Sure. And I, and I didn't want them to see me as competition. I don't have, did not know how I would be received. That community is magnificent. Yeah. I actually had one of the more popular ones. I think he's got like 80 some thousand subscribers. He said, let, let me call you. He called me and gave me, he said, here's what you need to do. You need to get out two videos a week and put your face on camera more. Oh, wow. And uh, I listened to those tips and it wasn't long after that I had a video that kind of took off and, oh, that's awesome. you know, he didn't, he didn't have to do that. So any chance I get, I, I, I don't forget that. I try to pay that forward. And I, I, I love this community that, you know, that we are in. Yeah. Yeah. It, no, it's super cool. Like I, I, I've, I always, I started off with like just family. V- I tried to do the vlog thing, which more for like family memories and stuff like that. Yeah. And I had like a couple people reach out to me and, and one channel now, you remember, you know who I'm talking about, the, the fitness couple. Oh yeah. So they travel around, they have like a more travel RV kind of home fitness style. It's a very interesting channel, but they reached out to me when they were like at 200 subscribers and he's like, Hey, your channel's great. Like, you know, here, here's my advice. Like, I don't know anything, but here's here's what I've learned and here's the research I've done. And now they're over like 20, they're right around where you are. Um, yeah. And I reached out to him the other day and I just said, hey man, I've been following you guys and your growth and you guys are amazing. And he emailed me right back, right? Yeah. Um, so it, really, like you said, the community is just great. It, a lot of people never think about Oh man, there's so much history in a cemetery. They did, they drive by it and they're like, uh, you know, maybe they say a little prayer or they think about it with someone that's passed, but they never think about all the history. I mean, I'm sure you've probably discovered what, what's one of the most interesting ones that that you think you've covered aside from maybe like let's put Arlington out of the out of the picture because that's probably your most popular video. What's one of the most interesting ones that that you've done on your channel that kind of caught you off guard? Well, there's been a few. One thing that that jumps to my mind is not exactly where I live, but about two hours to the south of me is where the Hatfield McCoy feud really. Oh, I mean, wow. it was it was big. Yeah, and I have actually discovered some places that I didn't even know existed uh, by by doing that. I was out filming one day, and um, I put just a little bit of this on the end of the on the end of the video, but. We, uh, as we were going through these cemeteries and these locations, we saw a sign that said the old McCoy home place. And uh, so it, they encouraged us to get out. So I get out and there's this guy there. He's like pulling me into his garage, <laughs> showing oh me all these, all these artifacts and stuff. And I'm like, man, this is amazing. He's like, well, they may just had a TV show there yeah. that was filming and they had somebody come and do an archaeological dig. Wow. Holy cow. So that, that didn't, all that didn't make it on camera, but you just never know what you're going to get into. So I would say probably some of the Hatfield McCoy stuff. That's cool. Um, there's some, some places in Nashville that I, uh, that I was able to visit a, uh, and this actually is, I, I don't know why I, YouTube for whatever reason promoted this video. And, and as of now, it's got the most views of any video that I had. Well, his name was David String Bean Aikman. And in Nashville, this is a story that gets told. I'm not from Nashville, but I'm about five hours from there. Yeah. And I was there doing one of the videos at this cemetery, and I told his story. He was a member of the Grand Ole Opry, played there weekly, and he was known in the area to carry large sums of cash on him. Mm-hmm. And so people knew he had money. Yeah. Well, there were some intruders that came into the house while he was performing on the Opry, and the story is they listened to him sing while in this guy's house and they came back and they came back, the Aikmans, uh, these people killed them and robbed them. Whoa. Wow. And so it is just a crazy, it's a true, a, a tragic story, but a true story stuff. You just, you just read about and hear about. And that video for whatever reason, wasn't very long. I mean, it was one of my early videos. I mean, as far as from a, um, production standpoint it was awful but for whatever reason <laughs> uh youtube picked it up and promoted it i didn't know what i was doing but anyway huh. that story is crazy and in that same cemetery there were um like three people including the pilot in the patsy klein <gasps> plane crash yeah no way yeah it's in that same cemetery and i was um and this was really caught me off guard i was filming that and um, you know, I do research and see who I was in there. And I yeah. saw this name of some other musician. And the name escapes me now that was popular as well. And this guy that was buried in that cemetery where all the people 
uh, were buried. Several of those that were in that plane crash, act, the Patsy Klein plane crash, actually got killed in a wreck on the way to Patsy Klein's funeral. I remember, you know what? I remember Whoa. that video, Chris. I remember watching it. Cause that and was I just, that's something I did not know before yes. I went there. So I've been fortunate to make a lot of discoveries in, in cemeteries yeah. that I didn't even know um, were there to make before I went. So you just never know. I mean, you never know, you just never know what you're going to find. That, that is, People's lives are so connected. That is, that is super interesting. I, I really appreciate you, you, yeah. you telling that story. So now, now Chris, now, uh, n- n- now we're going to get into, into some more, <laughs> some more personal, some more personal stuff. We'll, we'll break away from the YouTube channel for you, right? Being, being from Kentucky, what's the first big historical event you remember happening in your lifetime? And it can be personal. It can be around your area. It can be global. Any, any one of those things. What's the kind of first thing that jumps out to you either as a youth or young adults or something like that? Well, I do have, I have memories of, of Reagan being president and I remember all that. Yeah. And uh, I remember the, <laughs> I remember the California earthquake. Yes, I've been listening. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. You prove me wrong. I said no one has to know that. (laughs) But here's why. Here's why. And this is a regional thing because we didn't have the impacts here in Kentucky. Okay. The World Series. I remember hearing about the players while the the earthquake was going on, going out onto the field during the earthquake. Yes. I remember that. Yeah. But. I mean, that would, I remember that happening, but for that to be my answer, no, because it didn't really impact me. It would have been when, really when Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. Oh, interesting. And, okay. And George Bush, I remember, because my cousins were a little older than me, I remember them telling me about George Bush, is, he's, he's given a deadline, and if they don't meet this deadline, he's going to invade. So yeah. I was a little, I mean, I wasn't a, a kid kid when that happened, but I was pretty young. Yeah. Um know what I mean no, I was young I wasn't a toddler or anything so I remember it happening yeah. and I just remember seeing this war you know desert shield and becoming desert storm I remember that unfolding before my eyes and you know when you start hearing about um, deadlines and I remember you were talking about uh, your brother there being a preacher's kid yeah, what yeah. if we were in end times I'm also a preacher's kid oh that's right, right on brother right on I'm going to tell you when you start hearing about this stuff, I mean, I'm a, a kid in church. Here yeah. these old women. This is all. This is the beginning of the end. <laughs> oh God! So not only did not only did I not only did I have the trauma of being in you know as a kid seeing a war unfold, yeah. I thought the world was ending. Oh my so, God! That's that's so, awesome. You just man, you, you became like my favorite YouTuber. Yeah, because that is. <laughs> you know, I married into the the PK world. Right. Oh so when they oh, yeah. when when his brother said that to me, I felt like, is this the rapture? I was like, what? Like, I don't even know what that <laughs> word means. Like what? And you asked that as a child? Like, <laughs> Oh, I knew exactly what he was talking about. So. Yeah, so thought- well, so that's so interesting. So what do you think about that in particular that that kind of really hit home with you was it because like hey this is war and it's big invasion and and, and yeah. what what do you think about that kind of really really drove it well, home with you there were words that were being used i'd never yeah. never put in that type of a context before you know we okay. hearing about a deadline yeah invasion yeah. a scud missile yeah you know, i'm like i mean that, that can't be good yeah so it was just words and things i'd never heard and i just saw and the news and coverage, a, I'm sure, right? Yeah, I would say this yeah. is probably. I mean, at the time, it had to be the most covered yeah. war that that there that there ever was at the time. But if you put all that in the context. I'm pretty young. I do come from a uh, a church background, and everybody in church was um, pretty scared. So I yeah. thought, oh yeah. my goodness! I mean, I, I'm seeing adults here acting scared. It's supposed to be my safe place. If they're scared, what's that mean for me? So. So true. I would definitely say that was probably. I mean, looking back, it was probably a little traumatizing to go along sure. with. It, but, yeah. Sure, that's that's but, super yeah. interesting. So, so, so that's that's interesting because w- when I look back on my use, right, and, and I'll just out myself here. I'm 39. I'm about to turn 40, <laughs> and I, I lived a, a relatively sheltered youth, right? I didn't have a lot of TV when I was young. Not really until I was high school did I kind of get like yeah. you know some some more access to television and stuff like that. Um, 
But but I don't I don't really remember that a lot. Jen, do you? I do. I remember that um, because my uncle was in Desert Storm. Oh, okay. And in the Air Force. In the Air Force. But I, you know what I remember most, Chris, and this is funny, is that we recorded MTV for him. So uh. that he could watch. <laughs> yes. Oh, my god. We would put the VHS cassettes in the VCR and just record a whole VHS of and MTV. And you, you would send it out to him. And mail them to him. Oh my gosh, how interesting. Wow. Yes, and because that that's, that's what very, very you did back then. Because you didn't have, like, now you get the AF, you know, the TV, the American Force, the Armed Forces. Because when, when did that, when did, did it, when did that all that kick off? Oh gosh. 89? It had 91? to be early 90s. 91? And yeah, 80s, was... late 80s, early 90s, right? Yeah, and, yeah very, very early 90s. Yeah. And I remember too, he sent home t shirts. And so he sent us home t shirts of like, get, get Saddam and like, and I wore them to school. Oh my gosh! You know, and I'm in like middle school wearing these like t-shirts. So you were still, like, were you still in Cheyenne then? Yeah, Wyoming. Okay. Everyone's like, "You're the coolest." I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> I am totally the coolest." You know, because Air, Air Force Base was there and stuff. Yeah. See, and this is what I love about this kind of question, Chris, is that you really, I like to ask our guest, right? And then I, I try to remember, and it, it and, and I'll be perfectly honest. Usually, if it's before I was 14, mm-hmm. I probably don't know it. <laughs> Yeah. Because I, I pretty pretty sheltered youth, but uh, that's super interesting. That yeah. that's something that that really stuck out and, and kind of struck home. Yeah, 91. so ninety one. That's that sounds right. January to February. Yeah, that's that's super interesting. So, is there anything else like once that after that happened for you that kind of generated more interest in either like the military or you just kind of that was something that always just kind of like I said, kind of pulled the curtain back a little bit. And you're like, man, I, I, I'm not just in Kentucky anymore. There's a bigger world out there. Well, yeah. And something else too, my grandfather, I mean, he he was very country, but he was, he was well-traveled. He was in the military. He was in the army. He okay. was our, he was our family military guy. And, you know, every family has one. And, and Jen, it's, it's you and yours, it seems like. Well, Scott, too. Scott's person. active duty right now. Yeah. Uh, I just oh, don't... my goodness. So I didn't know yeah. why. Yeah. Well, first, let me stop right here. I come from a very... I'm cooler, though. <laughs> <laughs> she was the pilot. I was, I was a ship guy, so, yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. But uh, let me say this. My family were very patriotic, very military uh supportive i want to thank you both for your oh, service thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. i look back on my life and i'm like you know i, I guess at the time I, I you know i wasn't mature enough in my youth to make that decision but looking back it's like that's really kind of a regret for me yeah that i never um that i never served but anyway thank you all for your service thank you. Uh, thank you. we we really do appreciate that my grandfather lived to be 88 he passed away almost a year ago this past oh, december but he was in the military very well traveled yeah. and he would tell me and he could tell a story, but he would tell me all kinds of military stories, things the way the, the way things were growing up in Kentucky. I mean, when, when he was young, they traveled by pretty well by horse and buggy. Wow. Oh. Um, and then he, you know, lived just passed away last year. So I think about the changes he's seen. And we're talking about a guy who was up in the hills. Wow. And, you know, That's but amazing. anyway, I, I love to hear I, I love to hear his stories. Yes. And I love to hear the stories of when he was younger, the way things were. And I never really realized growing up that I like history. I always knew I liked old stuff. I liked yeah. old stories. I liked the old ways. I mean, my office here, I've got old stuff in it. I just yeah. love it. And then it, I, it, I made the realization that's all history. So, yeah, I, yeah. I like history. I'm, I'm a history guy. So. That's so, cool. so, yeah, that really talking with him, him being such a major influence in my life, um, yeah, that did broaden my horizons. So was he um, Korea? World War II, Korea? Yes. Korea. Okay. Yeah, I, asked, I, I remember asking him, I said, what, a, what you know, helped you to make the decision to join the, uh, the military? He said, well, I got drafted. Choice was made for Yeah, yeah that, that helped a lot with my decision making. <laughs> So, so what's some kind of regional history that either you know, right, having grown up where you're from, and someone comes from out of town, and they come in, and they're like, you're, you mentioned it offhand, and they're like, I've never heard of that before in my entire life, or, you know, kind of vice versa, where you finally kind of, once you got out of, you know, your, your hometown area, you started learning something about somewhere else that just kind of really struck home with you. Okay, so I live in Kentucky, but let me, let me kind of put this in context 
I am really where Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia all meet. We're in a tri-state okay. area. So sure. within 30 minutes each way, I can be in other states. Yep. So Very cool. my grandmother was actually born in West Virginia. Okay. So I would hear stories, her her grandfather, which they moved back here, and I, I'd always known them, when she was young, I'd always known them as living back here, obviously. Well, her, grand, her father, my great-grandfather, was a coal miner okay. in West Virginia. Yeah. So I got to hear all kinds of stories about the coal mines, and, I mean, there was one story that he had told where he was working somewhere, and, and the mine collapsed in, I think killed the person right beside of him. Oh so. Gosh. We in, in this regional area, I mean, it is steeped in coal mine and things like that, although yeah. that didn't really impact me personally. It did. Um, it did my family. Um, as far as Kentucky goes, pro- Daniel Boone. Yeah, sure. Huge here. Yeah. Oh, and we yeah. got the whole Daniel, the Daniel Boone National Forest. And we're very on a Kentucky note. We're very Daniel Boone centric. And, you know, there's a <laughs> I, I visited his grave a while back on my channel. And um, he was originally buried in Missouri. Yeah. Huh. And so they uh, they moved his body back here to Frankfurt, our capital, Frankfurt, Kentucky. That's a couple hours from where I live. Yeah. And they've got a huge monument built that there were some years later. <laughs> Missouri says, hey, we, we didn't really send you, Daniel. He, he's still here. We send you somebody else. Oh so now there's a, there's a big oh my going gosh. on of where Daniel Boone's actually buried. Look it up. It's true. That's oh, so, wow. oh my gosh. That's so funny. I would like to uh, eventually visit Missouri to what may be his grave site. I mean, they... <laughs> yeah. It's, it's oh really gosh. it's become a thing of comedy now. Hey, we but, pulled, uh, we pulled a little switcheroo on you. Yeah. <laughs> you, you uh, one got, time yeah. it wasn't so funny. Yeah, you got David Boone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah David, you, you got it. You got like David. the uh, the third brother, the you know the, the step brother. Yeah. So yeah, David the question Boone. is, who did they send? <laughs> uh, there's there's some poor grieving family out there. Think old Grandpa Fred buried on the hill somewhere. He, he may be over here in Kentucky. Oh my God. But I would say, as far as regional history, probably my favorite story comes from Lexington Cemetery. It's the same cemetery that Jim Varney's buried in. Okay. And there is a guy there uh, named King Solomon. Mm, now, here's a st- King Solomon buried in Kentucky. I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> so this Solomon, he um, there was a cholera outbreak here, and he was, he was the town drunk. Uh, and just at one time, back in those days, if you were a vagrant, they would take you out and just sell you to the highest bidder and say, he belongs to you. Well, they auctioned, he got auctioned off at least once. <laughs> well, and uh, I guess the last lady who bought him said, you just quit causing trouble, quit drinking, yeah, and just straighten up. But anyway, this cholera outbreak happens. And um, people, the city, I mean, they suffered a massive, yeah. massive loss. Right. I mean, people dying yeah. like crazy. Absolutely. Well, King Solomon, well, I mean, he, he, he was not impacted by the outbreak. And he actually, they said that he became a hero by digging the graves of those wow. who had been overcome by cholera. Oh my gosh. And he's, I mean, he's got a monument now. If you go there, the big sign that says King Solomon. So, you know, everybody else, a, a huge pop, part of the population dying by cholera. Um, you know, how how did he survive? Because he's not drinking the well, water. Cholera, he's drinking the cholera alcohol. Cholera through the water. Yeah. <laughs> King, King Solomon didn't drink water. He didn't drink <laughs> so water. Fine. That's exactly. I, so, when you said that, I'm like, he's not drinking water. That's so interesting. Yeah. And that shows that she is a lot smarter than me because I did not make that connection. I was I was full into your story, Chris. I, I was sucked in, man. I was right there with you. I was like, how did he not get cholera? I don't understand. How, the, well, he, who knows? Yeah. I mean. My guess, he may have even got the nickname King. I mean, they probably thought this guy's invincible. He's yeah. immortal. Sure. And he was just a drunk. He was just he was just a drunk. His 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 uh, you know his method was wasn't secret. didn't drink too much water. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm sure his his dig his grave grave digging wasn't too straight either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would, I would. Yeah. I would hate to see below the surface. There. Right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> six feet, maybe four feet. You know. That was super interesting. Chris. Yeah. I, I feel like I could I could continue on. So but what I think we've is hit all our your like? Highlights. If you could pick any cemetery to go to that you haven't visited. Oh, that's a good question. What's one that you are looking forward to? Like, like I have a dream location that I would love to go to. Where's so, that? I, I want to go to Monument Valley because I love the searchers that mm. John Wayne, the searchers, yeah. and yeah. I want to go to Monument yeah. Valley. That's my dream. Yeah, we want to go there for different reasons. I know. You have no idea. Uh, so I'm, I'm a climber. <laughs> I'm, I'm a California, like, yeah, California kid, kind of kind of a little bit of a hippie at heart. Um, yeah. And, and I, I, so I love rock climbing and stuff like that. Yeah. So I want to go to Cal- to Monument Valley because there's lots of climbing out there. 
she wants to go because yeah. John Wayne and she loves John Wayne and the searchers <laughs> and all that stuff. So is there like a cemetery that's like, or a grave that you really want to visit? Yeah. That would mean a lot to you. There are a few. I mean, this time a year ago, it would have been Arlington, which I'd, I'd been to Arlington before, but yeah. I wanted to get it on my channel. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, there are a few that come to mind. One is Lincoln's tomb. Oh, yes. Um, I've heard that. So it's that's impressive. in Illinois. That, yeah, it's not, It's. I mean, it's probably six or seven hours from here. It's not a crazy drive. So yeah. I'll, I'll probably make it there eventually. I would love to go out to uh, Tombstone. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Where that? Because I, I love that movie, oh uh, Tombstone. Gosh. That's such a great and, movie. Um, yeah. That's so great. there, and I would like. I mean, I would love to go out to Hollywood. Yeah. And film some of those. Those have been. I know those have been filmed. Pardon the pun. Filmed to death. Sure. Yeah. But I would. I would love to. Uh, I'd love to find some of the old Hollywood. Yeah. Actors, actors, I mean, I definitely. Walt Disney. Three yeah. Stooges. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's so and cool to do it. It's so cool to in, do in it. self your person. Yeah. You know? Because people want to see you, your personality there and the kind of yeah. things that you're going to talk about there. Because I, I want to see John Wayne's grave. It's tons of people have done John Wayne's grave because he, he has a very not ornate grave. Yeah. It's just in a, yeah. it's a flat gravestone in a cemetery. You wouldn't even know that it was John Wayne's grave. Yeah. And, and Chris, you, yeah. you, you, you bring up a good point is that one thing that we've run into, cause we do a little bit of more museum every now and then we'll try to film a museum and try to highlight a museum. And, and some museums or early museums said, Hey, we don't want you to film yeah. like this. Can people aren't going to want to come because you've, you filmed everything. We did that with the Jimmy yeah. Stewart museum. And, and it's actually, quite the opposite right and you just kind of brought that point up like it's been fi- all those hollywood graves have probably been filmed a hundred times but you still yeah. want to go up you know, go out there because it's just that much of a draw yeah and people want to be in it's in the space they want to be yeah you do yeah. and yeah there's something about something about it to me i, I don't know what it is i don't know yep. but there's just something that uh you know, that, that I like about it. Chris, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Again, this is uh, Chris from the Wit Doc Cemetery Tours uh, YouTube channel. Uh, for those out there listening, if you guys want to find another great YouTube channel that, that does history stuff, kind of like what we do on Walk With History, Chris's channel is, is a good spot to go. So, Chris, what are some places, what's the best place for folks to find you online? Uh, well, there's a few places. One thing, if you can just find my YouTube channel, Whit Docs, that's W-H-I-T-T, then D-O-C-S. That's my last name, and then just the, sh- the short abbreviation br- abbreviation for documentaries, Whit Docs Cemetery Tours. If you search that, I put links in the description where you can find my other, um, you know, other social media. Uh, Facebook, if you just look up Whit Docs, you can find me there. Yep. Uh, same thing with Instagram, which... I kind of a lot of times I forget I have Instagram. I try to post <laughs> on there, but I forget. Facebook's probably the best place, of course, the YouTube channel. So I would absolutely love to have you there. I I try to be as interactive as possible. Now I'm not saying that you know one or two uh, messages don't get slipped by me, but for the most part, if I see it, I respond back to it. Right on. So I would love to hear from you. I, I encourage a community and yes. would love to have you. Yeah, well, we'll we'll link to your your YouTube channel in the the show notes of this podcast for the for those listening. If you guys want to check that out, I'll link to it there. Um, again, thank you to those listening to the History Buzz. We do ask one thing of our listeners: if you like this episode or learn an interesting fact, share the History Buzz with someone. It's the best way for us to to help us grow, and we appreciate your help with that. If you want to reach out to us here at the History Buzz, you can find me on Twitter at the History Buzz underscore. And, or via email at thehistorybuzz at gmail.com. And until next time, my friends, as they used to say in Scotland way back in the day, Slancha. Slancha.